Hello, today we're going to look at states of matter and how substances can change between solid, liquid and gas. So, the first thing here we have the particles shown for solids, liquids and gases and how they are arranged. So you've probably gone through this quite a few times in your science lessons. Uh, we can go from solid to liquid and the, re and the way we go from solid to liquid is by supplying heat energy or heat energy is used. Uh, to go from solid to liquid. And what is that heat energy needed for? Well, it's basically to overcome forces of attraction between the particles. So it's to overcome forces of attraction between the particles, and that will allow for a solid to go or turn into a liquid. Now, it's very important to remember that the bigger the forces of attraction between the particles, the bigger or the higher the amount of energy required to go from solid to liquid, or in other words, to melt the solid. Okay, so the same applies for when we go from liquid to gas. We need to supply heat energy to go from liquid to gas, which is boiling. And the same, or in fact, the opposite is true if we want to go from gas to liquid. In that case, we have to cool the gas to go to liquid and cool the liquid to go into a solid. And we'll look at the keywords based on that in a moment. What I want to do now is just a quick recap, just to highlight the key points about this particular idea of melting and, and boiling. Remember that diamond has a very high melting point, and the reason why diamond has a high melting point is because it has covalent bonds between the particles. The particles in this case are carbon atoms. So it has covalent bonds holding those together, and covalent bonds are very strong, so therefore a lot of heat energy is needed to melt something like diamond. On the other hand, we also looked at carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a covalent substance, but it's a simple molecule. And this has a low melting point, even though it's a covalent molecule. And the reason for that is because there are weak forces of attraction between the molecules. And because we've got weak forces of attraction, that means we have a low melting point because only a small amount of energy is needed to overcome those weak forces of attraction. So the key point here is that for diamond, we have covalent bonds holding the particles together. And for CO2, we have weak forces of attraction holding the particles. And the particles for CO2 are, of course, the molecules of CO2. So what we're going to look at next is the kinds of changes that happen and the keywords based around the idea of uh, boiling and melting. So we know very uh, quickly that solid a solid can melt when it's warmed. It can melt into a liquid, and when it turns into a liquid, it can be warmed, and at a certain point, it will turn into a gas, and that point is its boiling point. Okay, now we could look at a graph based on this idea just to see what happens at those various levels. If we have a graph of temperature versus time, there are no units on there because this is just a sketch graph just to give you an idea of the changes that happen. But if we have a solid at a very low temperature, it can be warmed up and at its melting point, it will change into a liquid. And the temperature will remain the same until all of the solid has turned into liquid and only then will the temperature begin to rise again. So we can warm our liquid, that will then get warmer. We call that melting, by the way. We can warm our liquid, we get to our boiling point, and again, it will change state. It will go from liquid to gas. The temperature will stay the same while it changes to a gas, and then we call that boiling. Only once the, the, all the liquid has boiled, will the gas temperature then begin to rise again, and we see a rise in our graph. The same uh, or a similar thing happens from when we are cooling from gas that all the way down to a solid so we can have our gas at a high temperature as we cool we reach the boiling point and you'll see the temperature uh, get lower as well we reach our boiling point the gas turns into a liquid it stays at the same temperature till it's all turned into a liquid and we call that condensing the liquid then continue to cool down and as you can see that on our graph the temperature goes down and at the melting point the liquid turns into a solid and that temperature stays the same until all the liquid has turned into solid and we call that freezing. The temperature can then uh, cool down even further depending on the uh, external conditions of course and it can then turn into a solid and the solid can continue to cool down but it will stay in solid form. Now something you need to be able to do is to predict the state of matter, solid, liquid or gas, of a substance given melting points and boiling points. So we know that 
up to the melting point we are solid, up to the boiling point we are liquid, and then beyond that we are gas. Here we have the example of chlorine, melting point minus 101 degrees centigrade and boiling point minus 35. Um, we are looking at room temperature. So at the top there I've got 21 degrees. What state will chlorine be? at 21 degrees well it melts at minus 101 so therefore we know it's past its melting point it's also past its boiling point at minus 35 21 is higher than minus 35 so it has boiled therefore chlorine is a gas at 21 degrees centigrade what about iodine well iodine melts at 114 degrees and boils at 184 21 is well below its melting point so it hasn't melted yet never mind boiled and so therefore, at 21 degrees, iodine is going to be in solid form. Iodine is actually a strange one because it goes straight from solid to gas. But at that temperature, it's solid. Bromine melts at minus 7 and boils at 58. So that means it's going to be a liquid at 21 degrees because it's past its melting point but hasn't reached its boiling point. And then the last one we're looking at is fluorine which melts at minus 220 and boils at minus 120, sorry, minus 188. Therefore, at 21 degrees, that's well above its boiling point. So it would have boiled and turned into a gas. So at 21 degrees, fluorine is a gas. Okay, now you may have noticed that these substances are all the halogens, and it's worth doing a quick recap of the halogens here. So here are the different halogens that we looked at if we put them in the same order as in the periodic table there we are group seven you can see on the left if we put them in the same order as they are in the periodic table you'll notice that as you go down the group and this is just revision of what we've done before but as you go down the group you'll see that there is an increase in melting point and boiling points and that's one of the key features of the halogens the group sevens we have increase in melting points and boiling points as you go down so this slide was a quick recap of the halogens in group 7 and the pattern as you go down the uh, group, linking that to the idea of melting points and boiling points. It's important to link topics where you can for the GCSE. Now the final thing then is just to summarize very quickly. We had the idea of boiling points where a substance can either boil or condense depending on which way the temperature is, whether the temperature is rising or falling. And the melting point is when the substance will either melt or freeze depending on which way the temperature is uh, rising or falling as well. Okay, so that's the idea of gases, liquids, and solids, why and how we get melting and freezing. Remember that the boiling points and melting points will vary depending on the type of substance that you have. And you'll have to look at each substance differently based on the information that you have been given. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.